Hi, and welcome back to the Vagrant from Scratch course. In this video, we're going to explore how you can create a Vagrant environment with multiple virtual machines, all described within a single Vagrant file. We'll also look at private networks within the Vagrant file. This video is a continuation of a previous one on the course, where we covered the use case of a single virtual machine within a Vagrant file. You will need to watch that video first before you watch this one. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. In this video, we will create our environment on a Windows 10 host. Remember, the Vagrant file is portable across operating systems, so the same configuration will work on a Mac or Linux host. Our environment will consist of two virtual machines, with one being an Ubuntu VM and the other being a CentOS VM. Vagrant will configure SSH for both of these machines, automatically handling any required port mappings. We won't be provisioning any software on the machines for this demo, I really just want to show you how to get up and running with multiple VMs. But the one feature of Vagrant I want to demonstrate that I have not shown in the previous video is the allocation of private IP addresses for the VMs. We will configure our environment so that the Ubuntu box will have a private IP address of 192.168.33.10 and the CentOS box will have a private IP address of 192.168.33.20. Being able to provision multiple separate VMs and giving them each a distinct IP address is extremely useful for your environments. This is because it allows you to actually model your production environment. You may want to model a separate application and database server, or perhaps you want to recreate a distributed system with multiple virtual machines. Whatever your use case, a Vagrant multi-machine environment allows you to model your system in a way that is most convenient to you. Let's start with the configuration as it was for our Apache web server environment that we created in a previous video on the course. You should already understand all of the configuration directives that we have here. If you don't, check out the previous video and then come back to this one. The first VM we will configure will be the Ubuntu box. As I mentioned a minute ago, we won't be provisioning any software, so we can just delete the first provision block. Let's keep the other provision block though, and have it echo out, hello from the Ubuntu VM. We won't need to forward any ports for this demo environment, so we can just delete that directive from our Vagrant file. Let's also change the memory usage of the VM so that it only uses 1GB instead of 2. We don't need to mount the directory that we did for the previous demo, so let's delete that synced folder directive as well, just to simplify the configuration for this video. The trick to introduce the configuration for a separate VM is to use the full version of the define parameter. We already used the partial version to set the name of the virtual machine, but the full version includes passing a do block, just like how a do block is passed to the configure directive. Let's add this do block and call the block parameter VM1. Let's indent the directives which are now within the newly created do block, and give the better name of Ubuntu-VM to the define parameter and the other names of the VM. Now, the final thing you need to do is change the directives so that instead of being applied to the parameter config, they are applied to the parameter VM1. The one additional directive we need to give to the Ubuntu VM is to assign it the IP address of 192.168.33.10. This IP address is arbitrary, I could have picked any private IP, but this will do. For the second VM, I'm just going to copy and paste the configuration for the first and make my changes. Firstly, this will be called CentOS-VM, rather than Ubuntu-VM. Next, we will call this VM2 instead of VM1. Also, the box will now be bento slash CentOS-7.2 and the private IP will be 192.168.33.20. We'll also change the echo message to say, hello from the CentOS VM. And there we have it, our multi-machine Vagrant file. Before we bring up the environment, let's see what happens when we try to ping the IP addresses our virtual machines will have. The first is the Ubuntu VM, which will have the IP of 192.168.33.10. You can see that the requests keep timing out, and that the destination host is actually unreachable. The same thing happens when we try the IP of the CentOS machine. Obviously, this is because there are currently no machines attached to those IP addresses. Let's now bring up the environment by running the vagrant up command. You can see that both VMs are being started. Since we are making changes to IP addresses, you may get prompted with a dialog box asking you to grant permissions to the network interface being changed. In my case, this doesn't happen, but if it happens for you, just grant it permissions and click OK. 
We've already covered the output and what it means in our previous video on the Vagrant file, so I'm not going to bother explaining what all of it means here. Check that video out if you want more information. Now that the environment is up and running, let's run the ping commands again. Both ping commands succeed and the two VMs are now reachable from the IP addresses you defined in your Vagrant file. When we issue the Vagrant status command, we can see the status for individual virtual machines within the environment. We can also qualify each Vagrant command that we give with the name of the VM. For example, we could shut down the Ubuntu VM and leave the other one running by issuing the command Vagrant Halt Ubuntu VM. This could be a handy feature if you want to test failure in a distributed system. Let's bring the Ubuntu VM back up. If you do not qualify your command with the name of a VM, it will either result in your command failing and a message being displayed asking you to choose the VM as is the case with the Vagrant SSH command, or it will affect the entire environment, as is the case with the Vagrant up and Vagrant halt commands. Let's shut down the environment and also go ahead and destroy it. Remember, recreating the environment is as simple as issuing the Vagrant up command again. And there you have it, you've now got a much better understanding of how you can customize your Vagrant file for environments with multiple virtual machines and also how you can give each VM its own private IP address. To carry on learning more about Vagrant, watch the next video in the course. If you want to see more informative content, be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos on my channel.